Boston Celtics recently put out this video of Jalen Brown struggling with simple left hand pound dribbles. This video, combined with the media slash fan narrative, got me wondering, does Jalen Brown really have no left hand? I then spent the next 47 hours researching, watching film, breaking down statistics, and even reading a book to conclude that Jalen Brown's left hand is in fact... That's it, thanks. Well, firstly, you and I will break down the game that highlighted Jalen Brown's left hand struggles. Game 7 of the 2023 Eastern Conference Finals. Boston versus Miami. And then you and I will statistically break down and compare the top 50 scorers in the 2022-2023 NBA season to determine if Jalen Brown does have no left or is it just a media slash fan narrative that lacks any truth. A big driving factor in the Celtics game 7 loss was Jalen's 8 turnovers. I felt, oh man, we let, the, we let the whole city down. As well as Jason Tatum tweaking his ankle on a drive in the first possession. Therefore, Tatum had very little confidence in his ankle, he could be seen limping, and he just wasn't himself throughout the game. Even if this injury never happened, the Heat singled out Tatum as being the key to winning. Get the ball out of his hands and make others beat us. We were watching that previous series. He's a great player. The, the, he deserves the respect of our, of our efforts to try to, you know, Make it tough. Miami opted to flat show slash switch his pick and rolls to get the ball out of his hands. They would heavily help whenever he drove to force kickouts or get steals, and they would always have defensive specialist Caleb Martin or Jimmy Butler guard him. You see this reflected in the stats. Jason Tatum attempted 148 field goals in the 76ers seven game series, which includes a game two where he only played 20 minutes due to foul trouble. Compared to the Heat series, Tatum was only able to attempt 128 shots, a huge 20 shot difference. Miami's defense on Tatum shifted the focus to Brown. He attempted 109 shots in the 76ers series and had a 15 shot increase in the Heat series to 134 attempts. Therefore, making him the first option, placing a lot more pressure on him to perform. This pressure placed Jalen in a redhead mindset. No, not like that. Redhead is a term created by mental skills coach Gilbert Inoka, who has been the All Blacks mental skills coach since 2000. Gilbert states that people exist between two states of mind, those being the red and blue heads. Redheads often thinking and if this continues you get overloaded with information which clogs the system and prevent you from being effective in a given situation. It has also been referred to as red mist, with some saying it's like a red mist descending over everything, shrouding your judgment and forcing you into poor decisions. I don't know for sure, but I think this is what happened in game seven. The pressure of the moment likely placed Brown in a redhead mindset. Some clear signs of this are losing focus on the game to complain to a ref, here he doesn't agree with the no call, completely loses focus of the task at hand, which ultimately leaves Martin wide open for the three in transition. He hesitates this wide open open look, the best shot the Celtics found all possession, only to randomly jack this one the very next possession. Now this doesn't mean he was in a redhead state all game. A key point Gilbert emphasizes is that in any given situation on a field you can either be in a blue head or red head, most normally you'll tend to traverse the two. Jalen still made open shots and winning plays, but ultimately he was in a redhead state more than he was in a bluehead state. It's important that you are aware of the signs that you're entering a redhead state. For example, do you notice any tension that you're feeling right now whilst you're watching this video? Are you clenching your jaw, tensing your shoulders, or scrunching your face? I want you to take a slow inhale through your nose and a slow exhale through your mouth and try to remain relaxed for the rest of the video. During your games, the redhead mind state may show up similar to Jalen, with feelings of frustration being shown as complaining to refs, coaches, or teammates. It could also be feelings of desperation, making a poor play and then forcing the next player to try and make up for it, only making things work. This is where you need anchors, simple actions to ground you in moments of pressure to help you remain blue. Common examples from the book Legacy were breathing techniques, stomping slash putting their cleats into the ground to remind the players to remain grounded, and looking up at the sky to reflect on those who have come before them, or thinking about those who are no longer with us. Blue head is the opposite of the red head. Uh, a state of mind where you've very clear, controlled, the actions are more smooth, so you see things and you respond to things. When you look at Jalen Brown's performance in Game 7 of the Philadelphia series, you see someone who is in a blue head mind state. Jalen and the Celtics held hard into 9 points, largely due to Brown's defensive effort. He hit big shots in big moments, such as this 3, extending the Celtics lead to 12, and his focus state allowed him to make great reads, such as this one to hop behind the handoff and shoot as the defense goes under, or this drive where he's able to read and navigate space and finish away from Embiid to prevent the block. It was clear this game that Jalen was task to task thinking, not worried about the scoreboard, not worried about how long to go. And when you're playing more instinctively, 
you're more clean you're more crisp have you ever forgotten your shoes before a game this is an example of your working memory being overloaded perhaps something took away your focus such as your phone your parents your friends or perhaps you were thinking about the upcoming opponent or game defensive pressure does the same thing overloading your working memory forcing you to forget basic things such as dribbling this is exactly what happened in game seven the pressure of the moment and the miami heat defense likely led to jalen brown's working memory being overloaded therefore causing all the turnovers and fueling this narrative I'm like, bro, are you serious right now? You're an NBA player, a second team all NBA player, and you have middle school handles. But before I answer if Jalen Brown has no left hand or not, I want to emphasize a key point. And if you're not working on your mental game, then somebody else out there is, and one day the two of you are gonna meet. During the research phase, I collected data from the top 50 scorers in the 2022-23 season on which hand they preferred to drive to and the difference in turnover percentage for each hand. I then created this graph to showcase my findings. 68% of the top 50 preferred to drive to their weak hand with an average of 5% more drives. Therefore, the majority of these top 50 players have a higher turnover percentage with their weak hand, an average of 1.5%. And so, it is expected that players are going to be 1.5% worse on average with their weak hand and anyone above this number exists in this quadrant. These players prefer driving to their left hand but have a higher turnover percentage going to their left. Players in this quadrant prefer their left but turn it over more with their right hand. Anthony Davis being the worst, driving left for 57% of his drives and right 34% but turning it over with his right hand 9.3% more than his left. Players here prefer their right hand and have more turnovers with their right hand. A great example being Paul George. He drives right 53% of the time and left 43% turning it over 5.4% more with his right hand. Players in this quadrant prefer driving right and they are really good at these drives, turning it over much more when they go to their left. Darius Garland should definitely be forced to go left more. He turns it over 14.2% of the time going left compared to 10.4% going right, but he drives to his right hand 10.6% more than his left. So this leaves us here. Who actually has the worst left hand in the top 50? And does Jalen Brown have no left hand? I want you to think for 5 seconds who you think this player is. It's LaMelo Ball. He drives to his left hand 3.1% more than his right, but has an insane 14.3% turnover difference between his right and left hand. He is somewhat efficient with his right hand, only turning it over 9.1% of his drives, but a whopping 23.4% on left hand drives, nearly a quarter of the time. The next four in the top five worst left hand drivers in the top 50 are Desmond Bain, Jamal Murray, Kevin Durant. But before I tell you the final player, let's look at Jalen Brown's stats to see if he ranks on this list. Jalen prefers his left hand driving to it 51% of the time compared to 44% to his right. He turns it over 9.6% of the time going right and 16.6% of the time going left, a 7% difference. If you think about it, this makes total sense. He drives left 7% more and turns it over left 7% more. This difference, however, does make him fifth on our list. So to answer the question, does Jalen Brown really have no left hand? Jalen is someone you want to force left. He is more likely to turn it over going left and this is a clear weakness that the Heat exploited during their series. But does this mean he has no left hand? No. Jalen has a good left hand, but likely the pressure of the moment in these big games and a whole defensive system focused on exploiting a weak area in his game sure makes it seem like it. If you want to improve your offensive game, you have to watch this video next where I teach you four key tips on becoming an elite isolation player.